Hey, this is Dave Parker for Breaking Audio. Uh, today we're going to talk a bit about phase lining drums in Pro Tools with a plugin I use all the time now called Auto Align. Um, if you like videos on production and Pro Tools and Ableton, uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, you won't miss any videos. So let's just jump in here and talk about phase relationships real quick. Um, the easiest way to kind of observe what we're going to what we want to correct here is by looking at a snare top and bottom mic. This is a session that I recorded this week. Um, just a couple days ago, and uh, you can see here the snare top and the snare bottom First of all are not totally lined up in time, right? Because the snare bottom mic is a little bit further away from The snare top mic, right? So about this far away um, That would be you know, I don't know sound travels roughly about one foot per millisecond a little bit more than that, but uh, not to get too technical, <laughs> the, um, basically what we want to have happen here is we want these peaks and troughs to actually line up, right, the best we can. So by that, I mean that um, we want to f invert the phase of the bottom mic and move it forwards in time a little bit to match the top snare track. So um, we can do that by hand, which is what I just did. That's kind of the old way before, you know, before I started using some plugins that kind of did it for me. Um, I would do that. I would go through and I would actually move all these around and flip the phases and try to line them up and like do it by hand and try to get it to sound good. And you know, mostly good results, you know. But um, using Auto Align by Sound Radix uh, has given me the best results and it can do it way better than I can by hand, even though you know I, do, I spent years doing that, like you know, early 2000s or whatnot. Um, even, even like the matter of like a few samples difference. Uh, can make a huge diff difference. It's like surprisingly, I, you know, like I would have thought like, you know, at 96K, which is my sample rate, that only a couple samples would be almost insignificant. But uh, been, it's proven me wrong a few times. <laughs> um, so let's just kind of jump in and have a look here at what we got. I've got some, I've got a kick. I didn't do a kick in and out. I have a snare top, bottom, hat, several toms, a uh, pair of overheads, a ride and a pair of rooms. So we're, let's let's try to get this stuff in phase because what it's going to do is it's going to um, bring the kit more in focus because the waveforms are lining up together. Um, because on a drum kit, your mics are all different distances apart from one another, and uh, the sound doesn't make it to those mics. Even though you're hitting, you know, you know, the snare drum, it doesn't make it to all the mics at the same point. And then that's going to cause phase cancellation. So your drums are going to end up sounding weaker than you want them to. But when you phase align them, it seems to affect the low end more. You have more beef, more punch in your drums. Uh, sometimes the effect can be very subtle. Um, sometimes it can be pretty dramatic. Um, it's always worth doing, whether it's going to end up being subtle or not. I don't really know until I'm done. Uh, but what I do notice is when, you know, when I do this and then I go to mixing this stuff, I'm always glad that I did this and I, and I know it's right. So let's have a quick look at auto align. Here it is. I'm not going to go over every single feature there is, but, uh, I'm going to point out the basics. Um, you have this slider. You can all this all. You can kind of think about it as like a gate, sort of. What it's trying to do is it's trying to eliminate the noise floor. So if you see, you know, we are looking at the kick drum right now. There's a little bit of a noise floor down here. I don't want it to deal with that at all. I just kind of want it to deal with only the uh, the meat of the kick drum, right? So there's there's a slider for the input. So in this case, this is the kick drum and the side chain. From what it is that's whatever it's listening to. So the kick drum is listening to nothing. I'm sending the signal of the kick drum out on channel one because I don't want the kick drum to move in time, right? Chances are I've probably drum edited this stuff and I've probably drum edited it to things like the kick, the snare, the toms, right? Um, and the overheads move how they're gonna move, you know? Like I really don't want my kick drum to move. So I'd rather have my overheads move backwards in time. So let's, let's actually jump in and have a look here at a kick drum so you know what I'm talking about. So here's my kick right there. Let me kind of condense this a little bit. And if we zoom down to my overheads, which are down here, let's see if we can get a good look at this. I'm going to slap a marker right at the transient of the kick drum. And if we kind of scroll down to my overheads, it's a little bit hard to tell, but they're a little bit back in time, right? See, I don't want my kick drum moving that way. I'd rather have the overheads move towards the kick drum. So 
this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to my overhead hat. It's usually my starting place. It's receiving on channel one, which means it's listening to the kick drum, which is sending on channel one. And so it's going to phase align itself according to the kick. You could also do this with the snare. Either one is fine. The reason I choose the, the kick or the snare is because you think about the stick hitting the drum, you know, those mics are the closest and, you know, the sound doesn't have to travel far, you know, far equals, you know, distance as far as, you know, in, in milliseconds, right? So it, 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 you know, your kick hit or snare hit is received by the overhead, um, you know, further back in time. So uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, I mess with the noise floor here. As you can see, there's our kick drum coming through. Uh, it's tough to say with overheads exactly where to put it. I can kind of see the kick drum. I can see a lot of the snare drum. So I'm just going to kind of set it roughly in here somewhere. I have this set to de detect delay and polarity. And I'm just going to let it run. Let's see what it comes up with. So again, it's going to be moving the overheads to match the phase of the kick drum, the timing, and actually the polarity. And sometimes it takes a minute to detect. All right. So in this case, it's moved the overhead to the left 586 samples which by the way I am at 96 K so if you're at maybe 44.1 you're gonna see a lot less samples maybe 200 or so now I also have this overhead sending on two right so everything else in my drum kit is gonna be aligning to the overheads with the exception of the snare bottom mic but I'll get to that so I'm also sending to my overhead ride side, which I kind of have this set a bit above the noise floor. Let's see what it gives us when I detect. So my overheads will be now locked up. 568. The other side was 568. So I used an XY pattern and I must have got the capsules incredibly, incredibly close because usually at a sample rate this high, I wouldn't see um, a, I mean, there's no difference between the two. Uh, usually I see a, a few samples of difference in my overhead. So this is, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of amazing. Uh, I guess I did, did a good job of that. So we're going to scoot over to the snare drum top, which is also receiving on two. And I've messed with my sliders a little bit to try to get them, you know, out of the noise floor, just into the meat of the snare. There's a lot of that in the overheads. So I'm going to let it detect. Let's see what it finds. Let's see what it wants us to do. I'll let it run for a minute. I also have this sending on three because I'm having that send to the snare bottom. And I'm going to explain that in one moment. It has reversed polarity, as you can see here, and it has moved it back, negative 196 samples. Let's have a look at our snare bottom. I've set this up to receive on three. Adjusted my sliders here, and I have it detect. Let's see what we get. It should be a little bit higher than the other one. Detecting. <laughs> There are nine channels in auto align that you can send and receive with. So if you're doing a lot of drums, you, you need to be a little bit careful and uh, about how you manage those channels, by the way. All right, so this moved it back negative 248 from its original position. So that makes sense. The number is higher than this one because my bottom snare mic is further away from my overheads than the top snare mic is from my overheads, right? Because this is all, this is, this is it moving back from its original position. So now we should have a snare, oh, and let's actually take a look at this. Uh, it didn't reverse the phase of it. It only flipped, it flipped the top one, but it didn't flip the bottom, which makes sense because they were out of phase, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to rest my drum kit. And I'll be right back to you. All right, so I've gone and done the whole kit. Um, a couple of things I want to point out, a couple of additional things, and this is kind of up to you, whether you want to move the rooms or not. So my personal feeling on that is like, it's actually nice to have the little bit of delay between, 
right? The rooms, because they're, they're going to be even further back. Because my, my rooms are like 10 feet or something, like, in front of the kit. So um, you just get more space that way, you know? Like, if I, if I phase align the rooms, if you can see here, you know, here's the rooms versus, let's say, the ride symbol, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's significantly back, you know? Like, sound moves approximately, a f it's a little over a foot a, a millisecond, you know? Um, it just gives you that nice little added bit of space. So... You can move the rooms. I choose not to most of the time because I want to squeeze that extra little bit of dimension out of it. Um, it's it, you know that's that that's useful to me. The this project, I didn't end up doing bottom tom mics, but the tom mics, if you do top and bottom, are one of the things that I notice the biggest difference in when you get your uh, when you get everything phase aligned and it sounds really good. Some other uses for this, I like to mic guitar amps with more than one microphone, usually two. Um, two different mics just picks up two different flavors, whatnot. I can blend them together in the, uh, in the mix and kind of have a little bit of tone control maybe or whatever. Um, that's super useful, but it's really, really, really difficult to line them up by hand and get them really dead on. Uh, I have no trouble with that now with this. Another example would be a bass guitar. So if you take a DI, split it, run it to the cabinet, mic the cabinet, um, again, even by hand, this beats by hand, uh, it's just, it's just on every time, you know, as long as I set those thresholds correctly, the sliders and whatnot, it is on. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's multiple uses for this. You can intentionally, um, you know, phase cancel things if you want by lining them up and then throwing the polarity to try to remove something. If you're, if you're in a situation where you're mixing something, uh, you know, like a live band recorded in a room, <laughs> you know, you might be able to pull that trick off. I know someone who did that. Well, that's basically it for auto align. Um, there's some other little things. Uh, I, I would, I would read the manual. Um, if you're, if you're interested in, in, in phase alignment in general, I would just go ahead and Google that. Uh, there's a lot you can find on the internet. Um, I'm not, I don't want to make a four hour video, so I'm just going to make like a 10 minute one instead. <laughs> so one thing I do want to actually mention real quick before we go is because it's a plugin, we have to do some routing internally from like plugin to plugin and whatnot. It can be a little bit annoying to set up every time. So one of the things I've done is I've, I've worked this into my drum template. So if you want to see more about track templates in general, I did make a video on that. So you can check that out as well. Um, I, I worked it in there and I use it every single time and it saves me like 10 minutes every, every time I go to do this. <laughs> Have a good one. Peace.